Welcome back to the News at 10. As promised, we're now being joined on the News at 10 by Mr. Bismarck Rouhani, the CEO of Financial Derivatives Company Limited and a member, of course, of the President Muhammad Buhari recently constituted Economic Advisory Council to look at the decisions reached at the end of a two-day monetary policy meeting. Unfortunately, so too, you've been trying to get uh, to the studios but that uh, traffic, we understand, at the Otedola Bridge end of the Kara uh, area is uh, one harrowing experience that you're going through. Uh, we do sincerely apologize for that, even though you've been in that traffic for several hours now trying to get here. But tell us, let's begin with that, as a matter of fact. Uh, how is the situation? Well, uh, it's uh, harrowing. It's uh, congestion. No movement forward, no movement backwards. Well, here we are. Now let's take let's take a look at what happened today at the Monetary Policy Committee. Uh, I think we need to take a look at that for the sake of our viewers and the rest of Nigeria. So I'm waiting for your question, Jimba. Oh, this this is what we know up till this time. Another do nothing. That's the second one after President Buhari was sworn in for a second term in office. Are you surprised about this development coming out from the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria? No, I'm not surprised. Uh, quite frankly, this was one of a, this was a prudent decision uh, because definitely the world, the global uh, economy is threatened with a recession. Global recession looms, and so in that kind of situation and the fragility of our own growth, uh, it was difficult for you to actually ease and uh, accommodate so that uh, if you lower interest rates and the, the economy gets overheated, then there will be some inst macroeconomic instability. So I think. From a signaling perspective, the central bank will prefer to use open market operations and the primary market to actually begin to see how things go before we take a start at it. The things are fragile. Obviously, recently we have had an increase in the price of oil, but that's not that's that's nothing that we can actually rely on. So, if you look at the slides that are being shown, there, there's the of the global recession, the fact that the domestic economy is slower and fragile. And everything, if you look at our reserves, our reserves are actually beginning to slow down and um, actually decline. So definitely, we have, uh, we have things to worry about. But having said that, the impact of this decision on the working class is that we will see, we think that uh, the ordinary worker is going to see his rent increase, he's going to see his house rent increase, his medical bills increase, and also... Uh, transportation costs is going to, inc uh, going to increase. Um, basically, the unemployed people are going to be suffering, but the, the, the good news is that the minimum wage is actually going to be paid, and um, so there's some comfort at the end of the day. But when you when you look at it all together, we've had uneven and slow growth, and so there are some difficult days ahead. There's no question. I think that uh, we have to prepare ourselves. The reality is that there's a time lag between when you make decisions and when the impact is felt by the government, by the people. So that's it. And when you look at the whole situation, in, in, in finality, let us say that the outlook before November, the next meeting, we are going to see uh, higher unemployment. We are going to see the preparation of the budget. We are going to see the new loan to the population by the banks. So you will be increased consumer lending. And generally, we will see inflation which has tapered down, maybe flattened out, because the inflation that has gone, come down for three consecutive months may likely stop in that direction. We are not going to see hyperinflation, but there are some fragile economic indicators. So the central bank using monetary policy and the fiscal team, which is the uh, Ministry of Finance, Budget and Planning, Trade and Industry, are going to be looking for how to incentivize investment and actually change the trajectory of this country. At this point in time, we can say that uh, it's a delicate balance. And so we have to give the economic manager some time to begin to uh, take stock and then make the right decisions to move the economy in the right direction. That's right. Okay. That in, in, in a nutshell, that's what it is. And that uh, indeed is a good place to uh, let it rest. I must sincerely thank you and thank you for your efforts trying to get to the studios, uh, making your way through that you. traffic. Unfortunately, you couldn't get out of it. Mr. Bismarck Rawani, the CEO of Financial Derivatives Company Limited, uh, in Limited. Many thanks indeed for talking to us.
Leading manufacturer in synthetic hair extensions in Nigeria, Sulfia Limited is worried that its expression brand is being threatened by intermediate in imitations in the Nigerian market. During a press conference in Lagos, the management of the company says that besides losing about 2,000 jobs in its workforce, the imitations has taken a toll on its customers who are already losing confidence in the quality of its products. The expression brand of synthetic hair may be popular in the market, but what seems to be a blessing to the manufacturer is now a source of concern. Solpia Nigeria Limited is facing the challenge of dealing with fakes spread across markets in Nigeria and abroad. This press conference is one of the ways the company chooses to notify the public. We are more concerned about the adverse effect of these fake products to our product consumers in terms of, one, loss of fund as a result of purchase of fake expression grade. Dissatisfaction from the users of fake expression grades. But most importantly, the health hazard some of these fake expression grades poses to the users. The activities of fakers is also affecting the company's workforce. As at date, we have lost close to 2,000 workers. But we have to downsize our workforce due to the fact that if you produce and you do not sell, what do you do? You cannot keep them in the store. You can't keep the workers, but if they produce and they don't sell, you have to take a step to reshuffle your workforce. To guard its customers against falling victims to imitations, the marketing manager explains tips of identifying genuine expression. The first thing you should watch out for is the hologram. This hologram is sticked here. It is not printed, it's sticked. It's separate from the label. This color one is either printed on the label or stamped with ink, ink stamp on them. Going down, we have air hole. This is the air hole. Every expression braid, genuine expression braid has production date stamped with ink. Despite the current challenges, it vows to remain the leader in hair extension business. More stories now. Leading manufacturer of beverages and other consumer products, Nestle Nigeria PLC, is partnering with recyclers to tackle plastic waste pollution in Lagos. The managing director of Nestle, Mr. Mauricio Alarcon, says that this partnership will enable recyclers to extend plastic waste recovery systems to more communities through establishment of collection points across five more communities. Lagos produces 10,000 metric tons of waste, most of which ends up in landfills and waterways, which then causes health and environmental hazards. It is as a result of this large volume of plastic waste generation that Nestle Nigeria partners with recyclers. This agreement is to accelerate the process of recovering and recycling post-consumption plastic packaging. Part of what we're doing is not just removing the plastics that are there, we're actually transforming our packaging to make sure that they are more environmentally friendly. Nestle Nigeria says it has a vision of improving plastic waste management in Lagos, and this is a step in that direction. Our vision is that none of our packaging, including plastics, ends up in landfill or in the environment. So we need to make a difference. And what we're witnessing today is an opportunity for us to partner with experts, such as WeCycler, to be able to collect as much waste as possible. WeCycler is a social enterprise that helps households in low-income communities capture value for their waste. This project will also help create jobs. We're going to be 
creating an additional 40 direct jobs for we cyclers with the expansion of this recycling exchange program. So each recycling exchange has at least one or two you know, attendants that is there during the day to receive plastics, weigh it, and make sure it gets input into the system properly. Um, we're also going to be seeing an, an engagement of over 15,000 additional subscribers that are going to be coming, giving us recyclables, and actually using that income. With this partnership, the burden of plastic waste management in Lagos will very likely be reduced. Brilliant partnership between Nestle and We Cyclers. You're watching the News at 10 on Channel's Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Time now for Business News with Anne Waldo. Thanks a lot, Kim Let's begin tonight in the oil sector. The export of a key Nigerian crude oil grade, we're talking about the Bonnie Light, is suffering delay for a few days, which of course is expected to stretch into the beginning of November this year. This is due to the recent force majeure declared on Tuesday by oil giant Shell following last week's closure of one of the major crude oil export trends mission channels, the Nembe Creek trunk line. Traders were unclear on reasons for this shutdown, though possible explanations ranging from unplanned maintenance to contamination were all included. Preliminary loading programs released today for each Bonnie cargo were shown to be delayed by about three days, beginning on September the 16th to the first two cargos in November this year. Meanwhile, the planned loading schedule shows that about 30 cargos of Nigerian oil grades remain for export for the month of October. The Sustainable Energy Fund for Africa, CEFA, managed by the African Development Bank, has approved a $500,000 grant to help support the development and the launch of the Nigeria Energy Access Fund, NIEF, which is a Nigerian impact investment firm financed by Shell Petroleum. The fund will make strategic investments in sustainable energy right here in Nigeria, especially in the country's off-grid and mini-grid sectors. While the CEFA grant will support specific work streams to set the motion for and enhance its management and engagement with private and public sector investors. Once operational, it is expected to complement the bank's wide range of sustainable energy initiatives currently being implemented in Nigeria. Now let's head to the domestic stock market. It has regained 20 billion Naira from the previous sell pressure as banking sector suffered another round of profit taking today. Layo Adegoki has the details for us. Hello and welcome to the Stock Markets Report. In spite of heavy losses from the banking and industrial goods sector, the stock markets reversed its previous negative performance with a 0.19% rebound at the close of today's trading session. The recovery in Friday's session, which recorded a mixed sectoral outing, is attributed to bagging hunting for high-value equities such as Nestle and Nigerian breweries, which contributed much to the 25 billion naira increase in equities total value. Activity on the price chart table ended with a slight slightly positive margin of 17 gainers, led by 9.86% advance from Qtix, against 16 losers, led by 9.72% drop by Portland Paint. The trio of Nigerian breweries GT, Bank and FBN Holdings are the lead contributors to a total of 177.56 million shares traded in over 3,400 transactions today. That's the Stock Market Reports. I'm Layo Adegoki. with those numbers we'll end business news tonight thank you for watching have a wonderful weekend i am ann wawadu it's back to you gimba